So the first question of today is if I could tell somebody about group souls in other dimensions. Is a group soul a connection of several souls with different aspects which dissolve into one in that group? Um, well, it's a difficult topic because different people define uh, group souls in different ways. And there's also, um, uh, just like with twin souls or twin spirits, there's also, um, it's a term which is overused. So one uh, way in which the term group souls is used is to talk about people who have um, recurring karmic connections. It's actually a very... Uh, funny cartoon of a family sitting on the table and they're arguing with each other and the dog and the cat are fighting and somebody's kicking the dog and it has these little pointers of like that the dog was the, 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 the boy's husband in a previous life and how everything kind of like uh, keeps on going back and rotating around and this can also happen in, uh, uh, in group spirits. So um, you can get into a very negative cycle of karma. So for instance, I kill somebody in one life and that person comes back to take revenge in the next life. And well, then I feel hurt by him and I come back to take revenge in that next life. Um, so in this way, you can also have uh, a group soul or a, or a karmatic link. Um, the typical thing about people with whom you have a karmatic link is often that it is very hard um, to avoid playing out that, uh, that karma. Um, because of this link from the past life, in a way the uh, energy of the other person is very well known and in a way considered normal. So uh, anything this other person does with whom you have the, yeah, the link tends to affect you very strongly. Um, this often, often happens between partners or also with siblings or parents and children. That there is such a karmatic link and this is also why uh, family can sometimes yeah, hurt each other quite badly. Uh, even though they don't intend to. Uh, because there is no way to moderate the, the impact of the other person. Um, it's also important to note that in a way the, the people with whom you have this uh, connection or fam familiarity are not always uh, human. So um, I once had uh, a client who had a dog and that was already the third time that dog reincarnated as his dog in his life. Um, so yeah, it is very possible also to have like an animal spirit which like wants to accompany you yeah through a lifetime and yeah it's what just reincarnate to stay with you or uh, as often happens with cats cats tend to stay with their owner uh, without a physical body because they're quite used to being outside of their physical body anyway so a group soul in, uh, in this definition doesn't have uh, it's not the, the soul in a platonic sense, where like the soul is seen as, as perfect, as whole, and just fragmenting, and these fragments incarnate. Um, so this is another way to look at a group soul, and in that sense we're all group souls, we're all in a way fragments of, uh, of the absolute, of the divine. Um, and uh, not just the humans, but everything in creation is a fragment of the divine. And if all those aspects would recombine, you would again have the, the Absolute. But uh, in many ways, all these aspects of the Divine which incarnate or are there in, in more subtle forms, they're also more like holograms. So um, a hologram is in a way uh, a piece of material upon which a whole is implemented. But if you look at the hologram from different angles, you can see the whole, but you can only look at it from one angle at once, and you can only see a fragment of the whole. And in the same way, um, if I look at my cat or a dog or another person, um, yes, you can see the divine, but only a fragment of it. 
but uh, yeah, through time and circumstances more parts of the divine will reveal themselves through that one person or through that one object. And in the same way, um, so group souls, they don't immediately manifest all the karma or everything which you have to do with them. It is usually through an association of a few months or a few years that's all the aspects of your karma will manifest themselves and play themselves out again in your current incarnation. And um, these group souls, they often are there for, uh, for several reasons. Uh, it can be that there's a karmic disbalance, so either they need to help you or you need to help them. And they are there either to support you or uh, you are there to support them to, in a way, balance things out between uh, incarnations. Um, more often, um, it is a case of helping each other to remember who you are. Um, because we all have uh, karma which we carry over from our past incarnations. But, and even though our karma repeats itself, so the same events tend to happen in, a, in our current incarnation as happened in those previous incarnations, it is often very hard to decipher why things are happening to us or what is the cause or what is the purpose of these events. And these people who we've met in our previous incarnations, it's our group souls, they often can help us to move along, to remember those talents which we have, or to remember how we looked at certain events in our past incarnations. So they are very instrumental in, uh, in self-remembrance. Um, so also uh, group souls, they're not always a fixed group, it's, it's often a um, kind of a mutual support team. Um, often the souls in a group soul are relatively young souls, so people who don't have like a complete recall yet, they tend to form, uh, cling very strongly to the group because they need other group members uh, to work out their karma or to remember themselves. But as the soul yeah, becomes stronger, more mature, uh, they rely less and less on the, on the group spirit and more and more on their individual spirit. So it's also a maturation process uh, which goes on. Um, group souls are also in a way um, flexible and optional. So you can be part of several groups at the same time and you can also leave and enter uh, out of yeah, uh, existing groups and into existing groups. So. Um, it is often that uh, through shared experiences by people reincarnating together over a few lifetimes that the core of a group soul is formed. Um, and uh, it is kind of like a proto-egregore. Uh, what defines an egregore is that every uh, spirit, every consciousness which is a part of it has the same purpose, has the same goal. Um, so it is uh, an egregore is kind of like a political party, they have a party program, uh, they have goals and ways to achieve those goals. And the group soul is more like a spontaneous gathering. Um, they just hang out together, maybe jam and have a chat together, but there is no program, there is no real purpose uh, to them yet. So there is a kind of uh, similarity, there is a kind of a bonding. Um, there's a kind of mutual support, but it's much more of a social gathering than a, a gathering which is really focused on a certain task or a certain purpose. Um, so it is also possible, uh, just like with an egregore, to, um, to store parts or to leave parts of yourself with other members of that group or within the group energy itself. Um, so in that same way, having contact with the group spirit or making contact with the group spirit can also um, reawaken some talents or some knowledge of your, uh, of your past incarnations or uh, give you access to talents or powers which are um, available yeah, or made available to the group as a whole or in general. Um, but it is also not something which is, uh, which is infinite or supported from higher layers of the cosmos as an egregore is. So with the group, it's very much what you put in is also what you get out. And if nobody invests in the group, nobody meditates and shares their power or their knowledge, 
into the group uh, there is nothing there to take or to use um, one of the, the, the spirit groups I uh, occasionally join myself is a shamanic spirit group of, uh, of shamans many of them live in South America and yeah they pull not so much energy but mainly knowledge in that group and uh, you can in a way use the general knowledge which is available but it's also possible to yeah, ask members for specific things but this is also already a little bit more high level group because everybody's there at least communicating or sharing telepathically and with most groups the consciousness level is not that advanced yet so it is more of a, a subconscious um, yeah, stimulation which you uh, give to each other so are there more questions at this point okay so I will uh, then continue to the uh, to the next point um, well I've already answered part of it if aspects or members of a group so incarnate on earth into different bodies what could be their aim do they still want to reach oneness with other aspects or reach the goal they have in the dimension where they are one? And do they incarnate all together or partly and how does that work? Um, actually a lot of questions rolled into one. Um, generally each member of the group has their own specific goal, their own specific karma they want to work on um, so it's not like with, with an egregore that everybody has the same goal but just a different specialization um, so often also within a, a, a group soul you often find more similarity than people being complementary to each other as you would find with an egregore um, so in a way it is more of a of a, the sameness which is very stimulating if you are with another person who is of the same soul group and often also because of this yeah innate trust and stimulation people of the same soul group um, tend to fall in love with each other they often have romantic entanglements um, uh, or friendships um, and often the aim is in a way to to in a way to, to stimulate each other to support each other to help each other uh, but also to follow their own goals their own development um, and it can be that they want to reach uh, oneness um, but this can also be a trap um, because the, the the soul group represents often their past incarnations their past powers and it can be very comfortable to go back and to repeat your past lives like if you've been a great healer or a great shaman before in a previous life it is very nice to do the same thing again because you have a lot of talent you have a lot of knowledge it comes easily to you but uh, it slows down your own personal path of growth and path of development and this is always a balance so if you want to help others then it's very good to in a way go back into a role where you have a lot of power and strength which you can yeah uh, make available to the benefit of, yeah for of other people um, but for your own development you often need to invest in yourself that means learning something new teaching yourself something which you don't know yet and that means a lot of your time and energy are not used in yeah, helping others but in a way investing in yourself and ultimately that investment in yourself can also become an investment into other people or into the group um, so this is always um, yeah, a, a tricky thing to uh, to balance out and you know, people also tend to alternate between incarnations like in one incarnation they may be the one who's helping a lot of people and they built up like a lot of positive karma but in the next incarnation yeah they're being supported a lot I hear some talking but it is kind of ununderstandable I don't know exactly who was talking but 
Okay, uh, since it's not quite clear what the question is at the moment, I will just continue with um, the story, at the, the answer at the moment, for now. So there's also the question if all um, spirits incarnate together or partially or how does that work? Um, a soul group almost never uh, incarnates in totality. Um, it is usually a minority of the, of the soul group which, uh, which is in incarnation and other members tend to uh, help as uh, spirit guides. And these um, spirit guides are also very instrumental to um, help the, mem the incarnated members of the soul group to meet and to say the right things and to, to, yeah, to guide them in a little bit in the process of helping each other in their incarnations. So the non-incarnating members are often a little bit like the, like the lubricant um, or the catalyst for the, for the incarnated members of the group. Very similar to how an, uh, how an egregore works. Um, it can also be that indeed uh, different spirits incarnate in very different forms, but they take parts of the other person with them which have been lost. So in, I think in a previous lesson we talked a little bit about soul retrieval, which is the art of, in a way, recomposing uh, yeah, the spirit or the personality when, well, yeah, when parts have been stolen or lost. And it can also be that other members of such a spirit group were there or were present in that life where you lost certain aspects of your being. And um, it can be a purpose of those members of the spirit group to return those lost parts which they found and they've kept safe for you to bring them back to you so you can reintegrate them. Uh, very often the, the members who um, um, yeah, carry such a piece of yourself yeah, with them. Uh, it's very uh, often that you go into a romantic relationship with them so that your energy body can blend and become one with their energy body and then you can take back the parts of your own energy body which belong to you. Um, and often such relationships they are often yeah, based very much on an attraction not so much with the other person but actually with yourself with the other part of your being which you see or find in the other person. So often it's a very confusing relationship because often there is an extremely strong attraction, you cannot resist the other, um, it's like a fever and you fall head over heels in love and you have to be with them and once you've been with them or yeah, you've slept with each other once or twice you feel like who is this person and why are they interesting or what was I thinking? because there's no more purpose to your being together. Um, okay, I'll have a look to see. Okay. Yeah, so the question has not materialized. Maybe it was just some overspeak from some other conversation. I don't know where it came from. Um, so I'll pause again to see if there's any questions about what we've just discussed. Okay. Ah, that's an interesting issue. Um, to what extent can a person choose between being reincarnated on earth and joining a certain egregore? Can a person choose which egregore to join? Um, well, that is not so easy. <laughs> but um, a person can very well be on earth and also be part of an egregore. It is just that when um, you are a member of an egregore, you reincarnate 
it is often necessary to um, to reaffirm that uh, choice for the egregore because your incarnate itself is in a way free it uh, by necessity liberates itself from all its previous ties and bonds except for those which it chose, chooses to take with it as a kind of a karmatic program which it rolls out in life uh, but even so then the karmatic program has to roll out and at a certain point that egregore will represent itself or you will reconnect to it in a, in a spontaneous way, semi-spontaneous way. Um, the choice of reincarnation is very much due to um, the consciousness after death. Um, it's very nicely described in the Tibetan Book of the Dead that uh, after death um, various um, uh, you will notice various vibrations which they describe as different colors of light and uh, depending on how you respond to that vibration uh, you will take incarnation or uh, in either a very physical or more subtle form or not at all um, the lowest vibrations uh, are those of anger and um, desire or lust uh, because if you are angry at something you yeah, have a desire to fight it, to confront it and therefore you must remain on the same level as the thing you, yeah, you hate or you are angry at. Uh, this is also what uh, Nietzsche is warning you for when fighting monsters beware of not becoming one and even if you don't become a monster if you are fighting them you will be bound to return in a place where you can continue your fight. If, you still have this anger or this hatred within you. Um, so uh, this is also why in Buddhism they say like if you're angry there are two victims, the one you're fighting and yourself. Because you also become inextricably linked to the object of your, uh, of your aggression. Um, sometimes it is necessary, it can be a sacrifice uh, to fight because if, yeah, good men don't fight then yeah, the evil men rule but it is uh, also very much karmatically and reincarnation wise uh, a sacrifice that you're making uh, desire and lust don't seem so much as sacrifices but they are because if you have a very strong desire or lust for something then you can also not be in a place where that object is not manifested so you're also chaining yourself to a very uh, limited uh, yeah, part of the universe by your desires. Also, if your main motivations are these uh, desires and these lusts, then for the light side egregores, um, you're probably not going to get anywhere. Um, because the light side egregores are very uh, interested in spiritual evolution, of liberating your spirit, your spirit moving to higher frequencies, to higher realms of consciousness. And yeah, if there's too much anger, too much desire, too much attachment, then you're not going to move to higher dimensions. Uh, so the light side egregores are like, okay, you're just holding back the group, you're not part of us because you're not on the same path of development. So that would pretty much exclude you. Um, third category is that of, um, of habits. So um, if you're a relatively unconscious person who's just following their desires or you do what you're told or you listen to your guru or your, the priest or whatever, but you have no own initiative, no own growth or development, except what is taught to you or what is given to you, um, then you're very likely to, to incarnate in a place where you can repeat your pattern or you can continue your, your lessons. Um, so one example of that uh, uh, is for instance the, the martial arts. Some people become very focused on mastering uh, their body or a certain technique and to become a true master of your body and of your energy body can take several incarnations and this habit of yeah, working with martial arts can be very strong so that you keep on reincarnating to continue those lessons and those teachings 
um, a person in, in such a state is also uh, it is possible to um, yeah, get into an egregore because you are acquiring mastery uh, of something. Um, it is open to both the light side and the dark side egregores, but often the desire to get a complete control over something, to gain in a way power and control. Um, it is not by necessity dark, but it is usually quite, it goes, it tends towards the cold current a bit. So there is a bit of a, yeah, um, it's usually at least not the, in tune with the, with the fourth messiah of compassion if you're completely into this yeah following the existing patterns which you already have um, so then we come to the to the state which most humans actually have um, and that's basically that of curiosity um, so curiosity is slightly different from desire or hunger um, because in curiosity, when you absorb knowledge, which is yeah, a little bit more subtle than absorbing just food or uh, sensory impulses, um, then also the consciousness tends to, to grow, to develop itself. And by curiosity and playfulness and other things, the, uh, the spiritual growth is stimulated. And often because of this desire for this kind of stimulation, people tend to, yeah, uh, in a way become humans um, because it's a form which is very suitable to uh, exploring many different aspects of, uh, of, yeah, of life, of existence. And often people who are in, in such a state of curiosity, they're yeah, already quite uh, interesting or and interested in, uh, in egregores, in the different parts, in the different yeah, things they want to, uh, to move into. Um, in, general though that that curiosity is, is relatively chaotic because you are in a state of amazement and everything is interesting and fascinating and thrilling so you're uh, yeah most humans are in a bit like a teenager state if you want to put it that way of spiritual growth so they tend not to commit to a job or a function just yet which is yeah joining an egregore um, but it is a very definite possibility uh, most people actually join in the state after that um, and that is that if you're in, an, um, in a state of identification um, with a certain power but also a realization that it is not the end goal. Um, so this is uh, kind of an intermediary, intermediate state so you are aware uh, when you die that you are a spiritual being um, so you don't immediately run back into a body or uh, get trapped by these lower impulses but you are aware I'm a spiritual being I have certain powers I have certain talents but I have not reached yeah, reached my goal yet I'm not yet perfected I'm not yet able to do what I want to do and often people who have reached this state of awareness either during life or after death um, they tend to join egregores um, because the egregore uh, yeah uh, if it coincides with their own perceived purpose uh, can guide them to develop themselves not to forget things between incarnations or to reclaim knowledge when they do reincarnate um, and because of the yeah the like-minded yeah, people in the egregore you're very stimulated to keep on working on that goal and on self-development. Uh, so it's a very important source of inspiration for the people who already have this kind of awakening to their, uh, to their spiritual self. Um, the uh, final group which is discussed, um, which still occasionally takes incarnation, are the people who are, um, who are in a way have achieved the mastery and this doesn't mean that they are uh, by necessity a master like, uh, uh, like Vladimir was but they uh, should at least master one or several aspects um, or traditions um, people in this role they in a way have no 
personal desire or need anymore to reincarnate. In a way, they have reached their, uh, their purpose for their reincarnation cycle. So they can stop reincarnating, but often they keep on reincarnating to serve others. Um, because the power they have um, is, in a way, a resource or a tool or something they can teach. And they take incarnation out of like compassion to help others or out of a sense of duty that uh, yeah, the same way they receive the power they should find their student and transfer the power to their student before they stop reincarnating. Um, such people are not by necessity, they're, they're in a way beyond the individual egregore. Um, they see, yeah, they identify with a certain power or aspect of the cosmos and um, that aspect can manifest itself through one egregore or through several egregores. So they don't, um, they can choose to, to work within egregores or together with egregores, but the egregores are not so much a necessity or a tool for them because they can yeah, work individually by themselves. Um, so there are, there are people who are uh, seen or recognized as reincarnated gods or goddesses or demigods or goddesses. Um, and yeah, it's basically this category of people who have like totally identified and become one with yeah, a divine power or an aspect of the divine um, yeah, who can still choose to take incarnation. And they're yeah, quite phenomenal people to meet. Um, and this is basically also the, the highest vibration you can be in while still uh, being bound in a way to reincarnate. Um, if your vibration goes higher than that, you reach a state of enlightenment and uh, it becomes very optional for you to incarnate or not to incarnate. So it can still be done by uh, reattaching yourself to yeah, one of these lower vibrations. Um, but it's, uh, it's quite free. Um, I'm okay. So, let's see. And, uh, ah, yes, can a person choose which egregore to join? Um, up to a point. Um, most egregores have uh, kind of an, it's, it's kind of like a city or a country. Uh, they have a society and within that society there are certain laws, certain rules, certain ways to do things or not to do things. So people can get punished within the egregore, they can be expelled from the egregore, they can be disallowed to enter into the egregore. Uh, but it is also possible to sneak into an egregore and to join with it illegally in a way just like an illegal immigrant goes into a country. Mm. So, um, being able to join an egregore can be, uh, if we look at the kind of legal way, um, it is usually a true a series of vows, of commitments, which allow you to go deeper and deeper into an egregore. So, uh, in general, you can say there are um, about um, yeah, three or four states uh, which you can, or positions you can have with an egregore, and you can have many subdivisions of those states. So you can be a neophyte, which is basically you're new to the egregore, uh, they see some potential in you and uh, maybe you will grow in their direction, maybe not, but they consider you more or less of an ally and yeah, they're willing to, to help you out, to support you, to give you some advice, uh, but they don't really um, demand very much from you, except that you don't work against them and that you... Um, treat whatever you receive with respect. Um, so you're in a way, you could say you're on probation within the Agricore. And most people who reserve, uh, receive their first initiation, they have this position where they're given access to certain things. 
depending on how they use them and how well they uh, they learn they're either like kept in that state thrown out or allowed to progress to the next uh, state um, the next state is actually the person uh, who becomes active um, within the agricore in supporting the goals of the agricore um, so you've learned a bit about the agricore they've stimulated you they've helped you to develop and then it's in a way um, payback time so they say like okay we have the same goals and um, there are some things we need to get done either in the subtle world or in the, in the physical world and um, yeah we they will inspire you and uh, see if you can do it and um, often these tasks are a bit challenging because agricores have enemies um, there are always groups who have um, yeah, different goals and uh, there's a limited amount of energy so you'll start running into competition and this is often the true test like do you uh, really devote yourself and uh, yeah, pro yeah, prove to be loyal or are you just a sneaky freeloader who just wants to get whatever they can from the agricore and runs away at the first sign of trouble um, so that is the next kind of like shift um, which happens where some people yeah, continue to grow, other people stay at the stage because they're too unstable or too risky to advance because they're unable to protect themselves or they're easily influenced by enemy agricores. So you're often not expelled because of your weakness but you're kept from progressing further or being given more power or more knowledge because it's, uh, yeah, it could be harmful to the, to the agricore to give more to you until you're ready for that. So you're slowly hardened in this uh, phase of being part of the agricore. Um, the third stage is where it gets interesting. Because there you're seen as a, as a senior member of the agricore who is um, able to, yeah, uh, to work yeah, kind of independently. You have uh, been shaped in such a way that um, the goals of the agricore, the purposes of the agricore, loyalty to the, the ideals of the agricore is, um, is kind of natural. It's no longer an option. You might waver from the path. You're now trusted to do the right thing if left to your own devices. And that means that you can also um, go into a position of leadership or recruitment for the agricore. Uh, finding other members, initiating them into the agricore, connecting them, teaching them about the agricore, uh, being an inspiring example or manifestation of that agricore. Um, so you kind of like start becoming the face of the agricore and um, a role model for other, um, other members. And you also get access to the resources of the agricore. So they will, if you're performing a task for them or sometimes even for yourself, they can provide healing or energy or even um, several members of the agricore, either in physical form or in spirit form, can come to assist you or do things for you. So you yeah, kind of move into a management position. But you're still um, on the work floor. Uh, so to say, you're still usually incarnated and doing um, hands-on tasks for them. And the fourth stage is basically where you move behind the scenes. Um, you become more of, an, uh, of a judge uh, on internal disputes within the agricore. You become a strategist who decides yeah, how to handle uh, certain affairs on earth or between agricores uh, yeah, you can move into yeah more diplomatic role um, to yeah, kind of yeah, work together with, with different powers or to develop a relationship between certain powers or spirit groups or other agricores into yeah creating an alliance for a specific goal or purpose um, so this is kind of the final stage of agricultural advancement and usually in this last stage people tend not to incarnate a lot anymore sometimes they do and then they incarnate as a master who has actually uh, usually control or position within several agricores um, 
so they can really um, yeah work with a whole field of powers and energies and indeed create these coalitions and work together with them. Uh, it's also uh, true that not always but often as people progress spiritually they tend to become parts of more than one egregore. Um, in the beginning it's most useful to be just part of one egregore because it gives you focus and through focus you gain also speed in, in your spiritual development. And if you divide your focus over several egregores then your spiritual development tends to slow down but also it tends to harmonize. You tend not to over focus on something and not to go blind uh, to all other effects or to all other yeah, things which need to be done except for your ideal. So you tend to broaden your view, but the same way as a river widens, the flow slows down. And uh, it's not advised for like a neophyte to become members of like a hundred egregores at the same time, because yeah, where are you going? You just get lost. Um, the joining of egregores is something which is uh, which can be is usually done through um, a ritual and this can either be initiation or self-initiation or some other type of ritual where it happens spontaneously uh, the reason for this is that um, usually a human being in its natural state doesn't have the power or the energy available to break through all the barriers between yourself and the egregore and also to integrate all the impulses which come from the egregore and to reshape your energy body. So usually a lot of extra energy or extra knowledge or power is needed to uh, make such a transformation. Um, and that often means also that such a transformation is uh, connected to a sacrifice. Um, it's can be a very literal sacrifice where you sacrifice part of your blood or uh, semen or um, something else which yeah, carries your life force. Uh, you can also sacrifice something outside of yourself, a piece of fruit, an animal, something like this. But more often it is uh, built up through a quest or through a pil pilgrimage. So you go looking for something and often that something is that yeah, higher state or that higher step within the egregore or in an egregore if you are not yet a member of it. And by yeah, putting your focus there and investing your time and energy, you build up enough energy in your energy body, you charge yourself over time, that ultimately you are able to, to make such a step. And often the first initiations are self-initiations and um, often that when uh, a person wants to grow further and they reach a dead end and they cannot continue their self-initiation uh, then they yeah, find a teacher or a spiritual healer or somebody else to tell them what yeah, they need to work on or what still needs to alter in themselves uh, to continue. And the path of self-initiation is actually preferable to the path of initiation um, because uh, self-initiation tends to happen at the right time when you're ready for it. So the chance of in a way uh, being yeah, reaching too high and then falling back down again or being set back is smaller because if you receive power you haven't really earned yet or you're unready for then you can make yeah, karmatically heavy mistakes. By wielding that power. Um, another advantage of self-initiation is that because you're working with your own energy you are uh, you usually don't harm your own energy body and if another person initiates you then their energy enters into your, bo your body your system and the energy of the agricore as well and if this integration is not handled in the correct way then your own energy body can get blocked or damaged and you might actually lose some powers or connections to other egregores or other things as a result of that initiation. So uh, initiation is, is not, an, not an easy thing and it is to do it right. 
the simplest form of initiation is to use symbols because symbols are like a very strict set programming like this energy goes here that energy goes there the advantage of symbol initiation is it always works you have a pretty much 100% success rate um, but because it's completely blind and you apply the same mold to everybody regardless of their own energetic structure um, you usually get 10 to 20 percent of people which you actually harm in the initiation process unfortunately most people who give initiations don't realize that um, it's often also hard to identify because as a result of the initiation process often there is uh, a process of cleansing of shifting energies anyway um, so it is very likely that the person will stop using certain powers or that certain pain or traumas or other diseases will come forward as part of the transformation process but if you notice that like a month after your initiation you're still suffering from the side effects of that initiation then it's very likely that the initiation was not performed in the best way possible. Um, another factor is also that um, uh, not everybody who gives initiation is actually by definition part of the agrogor they give initiation in. Um, they should be, but um, as I said before, there are other ways. Um, so it is possible for a person... Oh, I see the call has a problem. So I'll pause for a moment. something is wrong with the connection here Okay, I think we've lost Zerts, but I'll try to reconnect him. Okay, I think we're all there again. Um, yep, so as I was saying, it's also possible in a way to. Um, to bypass guardians and gates and also to get into an egregore in a forceful way or in a sneaky way. Um, and uh, these methods uh, can also be transferred. So a person can also be uh, yeah, put or placed into an egregore where they shouldn't be or even the person placed them there is not even a part of. Um, so that can be rather uh, tricky. Um, if you enter into an egregore in an illegal way, um, as long as you behave properly, you probably won't stand out too much or you won't get kicked out immediately and you can kind of masquerade and use the facilities. But if you behave poorly, then usually they will come and find you and kick you out. Um, if you um, usually you also have to, if you get kicked out, you have to leave behind what the egregore gave you. Um, so certain yeah, knowledge or power um, or talents which you have developed in by working with the egregore, it is possible that you lose them if you in a way offend the egregore and get expelled from it. 
So in that case you will have to yeah, waste a lot of your time as a spirit or as an incarnated being and your energy to build up something which you uh, yeah, cannot uh, take with you anymore, which you uh, lose again. Uh, so yeah, being part of an egregore is not completely um, yeah, free or safe. Especially if you go into them illegally or you get initiation instead of self-initiation. Um, you can also do a mix and in a way to ask a person to assist in your self-initiation. That's also quite a, a nice uh, strategy to use. Um, I see there are two more questions, but there was also another question Hunter? which popped up. Yes? Hanko, can you give uh, some examples of egregores and uh, uh, also maybe uh, an example for uh, famous singers? Uh, I've heard that Bob Dylan mentioned he was really committed to to the chief. Uh, he said, an invincible force who rules on earth. And <laughs> I was thinking, well, does he mean an egregore or something else? So. Maybe that's a good example, like a famous yes. singers uh, yeah. who, uh, yeah, yeah, who maybe uh, sell their blood for fame. <laughs> maybe it's a joke, but please elaborate. <laughs> yes, I will. Uh, yeah, it is indeed um, a very good uh, question and also a very good example. Um, because actually most um, artists and scientists are connected with egregores or inspired by egregores, knowingly or unknowingly. Um, and it is precisely because artists and scientists tend to uh, create innovations in the world, in society. They bring something new, a new direction, and uh, they allow society to grow in a certain way. And this is why agricultures are very interested in them. And also in, uh, in places of learning, universities, but also in um, artist colonies, you often find that there is a lot of spiritual activity. A lot of agricultures are in a way recruiting or inspiring or um, using people uh, there. Um, the, uh, what in a way... Uh, in, in uh, most artists are have a west wind uh, uh, energy body so their heads are very open to subtle influences and um, the artists have also the, the possibility which often scientists don't have is not just to receive the energy but also to manifest the energy to inspire other people to show things to demonstrate it to make it uh, in a way visible or, or at least allow other people to sense it. Um, I have to say that when it comes to knowing egregores my knowledge is relatively limited um, because I know there are yeah, over a hundred light ones and I don't know how many dark ones. Um, so my personal experience is limited to yeah, a few dozen or so. Um, but uh, yeah, one I can talk about is, for instance, the, uh, uh, the Wachowski br uh, brothers who uh, made movies like uh, The Matrix, uh, V for Vendetta, uh, Cloud Atlas. Um, they're very strongly um, uh, connected to a... Um, um, an egregore, which is um, Luciferic in nature, uh, but is also from the light side of the uh, Luciferic cosmos, and it's also a hermetic egregore. Um, so they are a very strong force, a very strong stimulant, because there's many people who are very open to these impulses. So I think that they have and will have a very yeah, uh, beneficial impulse in turning the individuality, the desire for individual development, individual growth uh, towards the light side, towards the positive side. Um, so let me think. Uh, 
Ah, yes, there's Mila Jovovic. Um, she's also part of a light egregore. Um, this egregore is very, uh, yes, relatively new on Earth, so it is not a very big or strong egregore like the, the one the Wachowskis are in. So her influence and her appeal is very likely to be, uh, uh, to be a lot less. Um, so she's more of a pioneer, you could say, for, uh, for her egregore. Um, her egregore is, is not the same, but closely related to the Grail egregore. Um, the Grail egregore believes very strongly in, um, in a way, developing qualities, developing purity, and thereby attracting light and blessings. So the, the light and the blessings are not the purpose, but they are the result of your path for, um, yeah, to be a better human. Um, and uh, this is also the, 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 yeah, in a way, the, the impulse which she is um, yeah, trying to manifest, trying to show that in a way the human potential is, um, is limitless, but uh, also that with power comes responsibility that you have to take care of others, that you have to support the weak, uh, that you are created as a champion to, uh, yeah, to defend those who cannot fight for themselves. Um, so this is very much yeah, um, her impulse, a kind of most uh, messianic impulse, you could say, which uh, she's carrying. Um, yeah, I know another artist, a dancer, uh, Flora Gatina, is her artist's name, and um, she's also very much uh, she's very much part of a uh, agricor from the satanic cosmos, from the light side, and it's very much about um, also personal empowerment and very much about the empowerment of uh, of women and in a way using their uh, in a way, their 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 skill or their method at non-violence, um, because you can get things done in a very violent way, in a very forceful way, but you can also get things done in a very subtle way, in a very smooth way, in a very flexible way, in a very patient way, um, and this is in a way a much more feminine uh, way of, of working with things, and I think that this is an impulse which is slowly gaining momentum gaining strength in the world, non-violent communication. Uh, yeah, so that's also an artist who's uh, very much inspired by, uh, by an egregore. Um, if you look, for instance, uh, I've been also at um, MIT, uh, Harvard and at the um, NASA uh, research division in Houston. And there you have very different agricultures because they inspire scientists. Um, MIT is rather, uh, rather positive. In a way, you have a lot of um, hermetic influence there. Um, it's very much um, focused on, on, in a way, playfully exploring everything, getting to know everything, and in a way, immersing yourself in the knowledge, in the cosmos, in the world of engineering, mathematics, and in a way going into these more subtle energies, the more subtle dimensions. Um, if you look at NASA, um, it is very different already, because NASA is, although they do research, it is much more a technology institute. Even though MIT is called an institute of technology, it's much more about theoretics. Um, and there you find more um, uh, agricores which have a purpose with the world, who want to actively not so much help people grow for themselves, but they want to shape society. Um, so they are very much about manifesting, uh, they're much more oriented towards power, towards control. Um, so in all in all, it attracts a slightly darker kind um, of um, yeah of egregore if you go more also into these heavier vibrations of manifestation and um, if
if you go one step deeper, uh, you would end up at Harvard. Um, because in a way society is not shaped only by technological innovations, but it's shaped even more strongly by uh, leadership, by politics, by laws and regulations, um, diplomacy. And uh, there you find that the egregores are actually almost all uh, dark. Um, because the focus is, yeah, goes not so much on the innovation aspect or introducing new things, which is still there at, uh, at NASA, but it becomes much more about you know, like personal agendas, um, which are often like the person will have an agenda which is identical to the aggregate but not know it. So even the persons there are also more used as tools by, uh, by aggregores. And the egregores in such places, they tend to be fiercely competitive and rather um, aggressive. Uh, the same is true in general for yeah, studies involved with uh, um, yeah, centers of power. Um, so uh, mainly finance, business administration, uh, to a lesser degree uh, political science, um, but definitely all uh, financial aspects, they tend to be quite yeah, involved with those uh, type of aspects. Um, what you often see is that the, the, um, the more um, scientist types, um, they often are also more in tune with the heavier vibrations, with the lower vibrations. So they tend to go more towards the scientific side and the egregores associated with science. While the artists tend to be in higher vibrations, and they tend to yeah, go for the, yeah, the lighter, the more evolved egregores. This is not always true, of course. A very yeah, a famous example is, of course, uh, Adolf Hitler, who yeah, was indeed very much a spiritual person, uh, very interested in esoterics, um, also very much part of uh, several egregores, um, and, yeah, an artist, a painter, um, who loved nature, who loved children, who loved growth and development, but yeah, this, this, despite also having these very high connections, uh, high doesn't necessarily mean light. Uh, so that's always an important distinction to make. So artists are almost always connected to higher egregores, but not always to lighter egregores. But there is a tendency for the light side to be more present in the higher vibrations while the dark side is more present in the lower vibrations. So there's a statistical yeah, uh, yeah, order of things but you can't really use it for individual cases. Ah, um, there's a question about egregores which are neither light nor dark, but neutral. Um, can that be and how? Um, yes, it is very, very possible. Light and dark is not, um, by definition, a very clear distinction. It is more of a, of a tendency. So, as I said, the light side tends to believe more in evolution, in, in growth, in development. <coughs> while the dark side is usually more interested in manifesting themselves, in control, in power. But what usually makes an egregore light or dark, at least in, yeah, in my book, is uh, to what degree they obey or disobey the divine plan and the laws of the cosmos. Because I believe ultimately the absolute has a desire to yeah to grow and that all aspects of the abs absolute grow and develop and um, yeah slowly but surely yeah reach higher states of uh, of being and um, to that purpose there are certain rules and regulations and certain forms 
to, um, yeah, in a way, encourage that growth and to make it possible. And um, if an egregore is kind of like uh, supporting uh, that growth, that development, or accelerating it, um, then it is regarded, at least by me, as a light one. And if it tends to yeah, favor a slower kind of development or no development whatsoever or actually regression, um, then uh, yeah, I would consider such an egregore dark. At the moment I'll turn on some light, otherwise the recording will be invisible. <laughs> Uncle, yeah. uh, how much truth is there in the saying uh, of uh, artists who say, well, I've received my fame because I sold my soul to the devil? I mean, they, some artists say that as a joke, mm -hmm. but is there some, some kind of uh, maybe a small detail in there that says, well, you can have a deal, but it will cost you more than just... Um, small initiation yes well in, in a way it is it is true because um, for any artist to um, uh, like like any artist will be will be a tool will be a, a channel through which impulses of the aggregate can flow um, but often to be like a, a greater artist or more influential artist you also need more innovative uh, and deeper impulses and that means that you would have to yeah, progress higher to higher layers of the aggregate and that means in a way that yeah in a way sacrifice or indeed yeah uh, self initiation or um, yeah committing to uh, to the aggregate will help you in life and after death you have to serve the egregore in a way, maybe by inspiring other artists. Uh, so consciously or unconsciously, this is very often the case. And I also see very talented artists who who do not make this step, and they in a way also hit kind of a blockage or a ceiling there, even though they're very skilled. That yeah, they cannot yeah, break through because they have no support mechanism. They have no support which um, yeah, carries them forward. Um, the support mechanism yeah, has to be not just spiritual but also physical. Artists often need a backing, a promoter, a gallery owner or investors who will promote their work or uh, help it to move forward. And uh, those people can also be people of the same egregore. So becoming part of an egregore will give you allies in the, in the artistic field because members of the same egregore will probably help you out in some way or promote you or plug you or uh, do something else to help you as a beginning or struggling artist. So while it is not a necessity, it does yeah, accelerate your development a lot if you do commit to an, uh, to an egregore. Um, so selling the soul is, yeah, in a way, um, I would say it is more the spirit than the soul anyway um, and as I said before it is often something which will only last one incarnation uh, because it needs to be reaffirmed before the egregore can again take control over you in the next incarnation um, but yeah I definitely see a lot of egregorial influence and I think there is also um, a healthy interest in, uh, in spirituality and spiritual practices in the artistic community. And I think that knowingly or unknowingly many people yeah, make contact with egregores and get deeper into contact with egregores uh, through their processes as an artist. And does that answer your question? <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about the neither light nor dark egregores. Um, because indeed some egregores are very, you could say, interested in acceleration or deceleration of the process. And deceleration is also not necessarily bad. Uh, because if people would yeah, 
get certain knowledge or power before they're strong enough or mature enough, they do horrible things. Just look at our environment. Um, so in a way, dark agriculture is also a necessary evil to um, yeah, determine the pace of development. And the person who is strong enough or ready enough can usually bypass all the challenges and hurdles which the dark agriculture creates and grow anyway. I'll pause for a moment because I see there's another problem with the connection. doesn't seem to be resolving itself, so I'll try to call again. Okay, yeah. It got dropped. Okay, it doesn't seem to be reconnecting, unfortunately, uh, but time is running. So I think I'll just continue and hope you can read, yeah, hear the last part on the, I'm going to put it on YouTube. Um, yeah, so about neutral agrogores. Neutral agrogores, um, they are more interested in, in yeah, maintaining the whole framework. Um, so there is kind of, as I said before, a, a structure. Oops. So as I said before, there is a structure of rules. So for instance, in our, uh, on our planet we have karma, and we have gods of karma, laws of karma, that determine your reincarnation. And actually this whole um, structure of yeah, spiritual laws is not universal. So in different solar systems there are different spiritual laws. And these structures are also maintained and set up. And this is often um, one of the big goals of, of the neutral egregores. They're in a way not interested in how fast or how slow development happens, but they're very interested in yeah, creating the possibility of development and maintaining the structures which can be used by both light and dark agricores. So uh, maintaining life on, on earth for instance is one because like if yeah the you if life would be destroyed yeah that would yeah, create a lot less opportunities for both sides to do anything. Um, so often these uh, um, yeah, neutral egregores are involved in, in the most fundamental processes. They don't, it's kind of strange to call them an egregore because most egregores have their own specific ideal, their own specific utopia which they are trying to create. But the neutral egregores, they in a way already have their utopia, they just want to maintain it. Um, so they're usually relatively humble. Um, don't do a lot of recruiting. Most of the spirits are kind of also older or retired spirits who have no more goals or they've already achieved the, the highest state in their own egregore. So they decide, okay, let's not just go for all these little fragmentary side paths anymore, but let's just devote myself to the structure. Um, one other uh, symptom of these uh, neutral egregores is that even though they uh, exist on many different layers of, uh, of consciousness, that there's usually a very open communication between them and uh, the Absolute. They're much more transparent 
then yeah, either light or dark egg cores, which are usually, as I said, like have many different levels of initiation and don't allow you to progress. Because to become part of a neutral echo core, that in a way uh, requires uh, a large amount of selflessness, a large amount of neutrality. And because of that selflessness, because of that neutrality, um, the members of those echo cores uh, yeah, can be and are a lot more trusted. Uh, than yeah, members of any other agricores because any other agricore, light or dark, also shows that you have a lot of focus on your goal or your ideals and therefore you're less neutral. Okay, um, I'll just... okay, because it's already a little bit late but I think it will be nice to, uh, to close with a little <coughs> uh, meditation to get to know an agricore a little better. <coughs> okay, so just relax. You can close your eyes. You've probably heard of the big problems which are occurring in ISIS with all the terrorism and stuff. <coughs> but a little bit across the border in Iran is also the home of a very nice agricore. So we'll now ask this agricore to open itself to all of you. It is very much a harmony, uh, an egregore of harmony, which believes that it doesn't matter what cultural or religious or genetic or racial differences there are. Out of that diversity can come a great civilization, a great strength. That all these elements can be added together in harmoniously to create a beautiful melange of knowledge, of wisdom, spirituality and peace. This is an egregore which inspired many of the great kings and emperors and helped them to bring peace and prosperity to their countries. Unfortunately, it's an egregore which very few people belong to anymore or listen to anymore. But it stood at the cradle of many great civilizations. And open yourself more deeply to its influence. To allow its wisdom to start shaping your own thoughts and patterns so you can stop also your own internal fight with all your different aspects. Because without inner harmony you cannot create outer harmony. Feel how your whole energy body becomes harmonized. Because it starts making the right decisions. And moving into the correct flow of balance between yourself and the world around you. You can now feel that as your own inner harmony grows, but also several nature agricores 
will come to support you. Because this egregore was very friendly, even though it's a cultural egregore with nature egregore. And let the energies of the nature egregores and this culture egregore start blending together. Like when they did, when the Nordic paganism was still active in your countries. And feel that as the nature enters into you, so your strength will start to grow. Your desire and your will to manifest yourself will become stronger because now you're mixing these high vibrations of wisdom with lower vibrations from the manifested world. Don't allow the power to overpower you. Make sure that all your power and energy listens and obeys to the divine wisdom so that its strength will not turn against you, it will support you and stabilize you. And feel the areas where your own disharmony is still a threat to you and therefore is blocking you from being as strong as you can be. Remember this state and this connection. It's a very friendly egregore, very desirous to help every living thing on this planet. So now having experienced it, it will be easy to find back. can stay in this meditative state as long as you want. But I will end the lesson for now and I will see you again next month. Thank you very all, all very much for listening and your beautiful questions and